excellent. All right, so let's all begin. Take your, bring your uh, yoga strap to behind your left leg, please. You're lying on your back, getting ready to go. And we may have my little kitty here as a model. Want me to take him? Nope, he's fine. Okay, okay so we're going to straighten out the left leg and bend it. And just keep going like that. Straighten and bend. And again. And again. Do four more. Looking for a little bit of resilience in the back of the leg. Two more times. You can add a little foot flex in. And then take the other leg in the strap. And eight times there. And you keep going with those eight times. I have to do a little screen adjustment, please. And finish those. Good, and then we'll go to big view. Okay. All right, so now, let me hang on a second. Let me move this over. Okay, let's start with our bridges. Heels dug into the floor, rest of the foot is off the mat, arms long by the side of the hips. Take a breath for preparation. On your exhale, curl your tailbone upward to imprint your back and peel your spine off the mat. As you exhale, opening your hip line. This is your first bridge. Exhale, roll down through your spine. Maybe it didn't get up so high. Breath for preparation again. And exhale, curl your tailbone up, pushing pubic bone up to the ceiling. Hold that line, take a breath in. And exhale, roll down, articulating your back. See if you can get the low back to relax into the mat. And then let the pelvis land into neutral spine. Breath for preparation again. Exhale, curl the tailbone, pushing pubic bone up to the ceiling, opening your hip line, keeping this, trying to be as flat as you can here, breathing in. And exhale, roll down. Marina, I'm sorry, we're not seeing you. We're seeing other people. Okay, thank you for saying that. Let me see how I can fix that. Mm. How about now? Yes? No? Yes? Okay? We're good? Okay, right. we were so. All along for some of us, I think. Pardon me? I, I was seeing you all along. So. Yeah, it depends on whether you have pinned, you can put it on speaker view and you won't see the gallery. So you have to go up into your right hand corner. And in the little three dot section, oh, it should say speaker. No, no, it's not up there. It's above the tiles on the top bar. It should say speaker view or gallery view. Everybody got that? So far, so good. Please unmute yourself and tell me if you were having trouble to see that, okay? Oops, sorry. Sorry, Bubby. Okay, now we're going to do our rotations. So bring your legs one at a time to tabletop. While we're here, we might as well straighten our legs since we just did that bridge. Let's go a couple more times like that. And we're going to add some more bridges in at the end of the warm up. So hold your legs at tabletop, arms out to the side like a T position. Twist your legs to the right as you breathe in. Remember to push your left knee over the top of the right a little bit. Exhale, bring it to center. Twist to the left as you breathe in, the right knee goes over the top. Exhale, pull it back. Twist to the right as you breathe in. Exhale, return to center. Twist to the left as you breathe in. And exhale, return to center. Keep going, rotating. Inhale, exhale to center. Rotate left, inhale. Exhale to center, one more set. Rotate right, breathing in. Exhale back to center. One more to the left. Take your breath in and exhale to center. Lower one foot, other foot down on the mat. Thread your fingers together. Place them behind your head and make a cradle. So I'd like you to think about 
when you're lying down here with your knuckles underneath your head and just perceive how you feel in your shoulders and in your chest. This should be a relatively comfortable position for your neck. And, and later on in some of the classes, I may show you some images of skeletons and how the head and the neck and the shoulders should be aligned for, for lack of stress and good function. So now we're gonna raise the head like a quarter of inch, an inch off the mat so that you can feel how heavy the head is. You're, I actually have a little contact of my knuckle on the floor because it's like, oh my goodness, my head really weighs a lot. Just lifting it a little bit off the mat. We breathe. And on the exhale, we lift up the chest, pressing the low back into the mat, in keeping the shoulders down. Stay as you take your breath. And on your exhale, roll yourself backwards through your thoracic spine. So the movement is in your chest. Breath for preparation, lifting the head slightly to feel the weight. Exhale, curl forward, imprinting your back and pull your ribs together in the front, keeping the shoulders down in place. Breathe in and exhale, roll back down into the mat. Breath for preparation again, the head lifts off a little bit. Exhale and feel like your chest is curling right where your heart is. And your gaze might come forward, but try not to pull on your neck to make that happen. Take a breath. On your exhale, roll back down, flattening your thoracic spine letting your head rest into your hands. Breath again for prep, lift the head a little bit. Exhale and curl upward towards your legs. Stay in your lifted position, take a breath in, and on your exhale, lower yourself back to the floor. Breath again for preparation, the head lifts off a little bit. Exhale, curl forward towards your legs, imprint your back, stay there, breathe in. Let's go right side, exhaling over. Come through the center, breathe in, rotate, your upper body over to the left, keep your chest lifted forward, and we breathe in, come center, exhale to the right, breathe in, come through the center, and exhale to the left, inhale through the center, exhale to the right, inhale to the center, exhale to the left, keep going, keep your chest lifted, try not to let your head be pulled by your hands, feel like the intensity of the work, one more set, we go over right, is in right below your ribs. Maybe it goes across to, your, to the opposite side of your pelvis. Come through the center and then go down. Stretch your arms and your legs all the way out, reaching really long, point your toes, flex your feet, flex your wrists. Circle your wrists and your feet around and just loosen up the end of your body. Go the other way around, circling wrists and elbows. And now let's go into uh, last time we did the 100 partially down with legs, partially up with legs. We're going to do the same thing again today. Your focus should be, let's bring your arms up to the ceiling, close your fingers together like a paddle. The focus should be on the chest lifting the way it did when your hands were behind your head and you practiced that chest lift. It's a curving of your thoracic spine right around your heart. Take a breath for prep. On your exhale, Lift up and feel the curve of your thoracic spine right between your shoulder blades, right at your heart level. Pump your arms for warm up. Inhale. Exhale, three, four, five. Breathe into your back. Out, two, three, four, five. Every time you breathe, try to keep your shoulders down. Exhale, three, four, five. It's really easy to let them raise with the breath. Exhale, three, four, five. Fifth set, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. Sixth set, right leg comes to tabletop, exhale, three, four, five. Seventh set, leg comes to tabletop, exhale, three, four, five. Eighth set, it stays in tabletop, exhale, three, four, five. Lengthen the legs to 45 for ninth. Last one, breathe in. And exhale, three, four, five. Pull your knees in, rest your head into the mat, Hold your hands on your knees and rock sideways. So instead of just turning your head to release the neck tension, think of releasing the tension across the whole back of the body. <clears throat> Keeping the chin tucked a little into the throat. Okay, so now let's take, if you have, let's everybody just grab behind your knees, roll up to seated position. I'm gonna reposition the camera just a little bit. And, if you have trouble doing a roll up, which is just a very slow sit up, 
focus on making a very precise roll back down. So as we sit tall, we look towards your navel, you pull your shoulders down, your arms are reaching forward at the point where you feel you're going to go splat. If you feel like you need to bend your knees to get your low back on the mat, then you can do that, slowing down the body. Arms can come over your head. You can bring your arms forward and do a regular roll up. If you need to, you can get yourself up to seated position, however you do, and focus on the rolling back down. And we look at the navel, pulling in the belly, anchoring the shoulders towards the hips, pulling the shoulders down even more as you get closer to the floor. Soften your knees if you need to feel that low back imprint. Inhale, upper body comes up. Exhale, shoulders down as you pull yourself forward, looking at your navel. Breathe in, roll back. Try to keep a nice long neck. And then exhale when you have to. Breathe in for the first part of the roll up, inhaling up. And then exhale, engage the shoulder depression. Abs are working, looking still at the navel, reaching forward. Inhale, begin your roll back. Change to your exhale when you begin to lose control. And let's leave it right there. Let's take your yoga strap again. Place this time a foot either into a loop or you can just loop the whole yoga strap around the foot. Let's we'll start with the left leg. We're gonna do a little bit of loosening up the leg for our single leg circles. Looking in a passive way, what is our range of motion? So I can have my left hand in my left hip so I can support my hip and just feel what the joint does. And I'm gonna make my leg go into a small circle on the ceiling, tethering, I'm, I'm guiding it around with my yoga strap. And now make this circle just a little bit bigger, letting it go outward a little bit more. Feel like where does that leg like to go without the hip coming with, let it go away from you and then pull it upward towards the right, across the body and notice the tense spot in the, in the outer hip, the back outer hip, and then bring the leg back up. So that's your range on that side. Let's go to the other side, experience the range. So lengthen out the leg completely. This time put your right hand in your hip crease or somewhere on your hip line to give it a little support if you're exploring a range that might be a little testy in that hip. So let's circle the leg in small circles and then increase the circle. You're not really using your leg to do this. You're just allowing the yoga strap to support your leg making a bigger circle with a very relaxed hip. This is just your sort of passive range of motion. Feeling the outer, I feel mostly the outer hip stretching and the inner thigh. Now take your yoga strap off your foot and let's do the single leg circle in the same way that we did maybe the similar range of motion, but now you're working the muscles to make the leg do this. So straighten the leg all the way as we like to do. Quad is really firing. You can do this circle with a heel flexed or a toe. I'm gonna to do it with the toe. Bringing the leg upward towards your face, bring it across the body towards your left shoulder, feeling the quad slowly down towards your other foot. Then bring it up the right side and see how you can keep the body away from rolling with that leg. Feel the quad kick in at the top. Let's do one small slow circle like that. Large circle, but slow. Bring it up the right side. Feel the inner thigh working to bring the leg up. Now we go with a little pace. Across to the left, circle down, up to the right, back to the head. Across, down, up the right, to the head. Two more. So two slow ones, four fast ones. Dynamic challenge, reversing, very slowly open. And then pull it down towards the floor. This is the same leg going the reverse direction. Back up to the head. Open the leg outward nice and slowly. Bring it downward towards the left foot. Bring it up the left side of the body, back up to the head. And now faster with pace, trying to keep stable. And that was one, and now we go two, right over and left and up. Right over and left and up, last one. Right, down, over, left and up. Bend your knee, put that leg down on the mat. Bring the left leg in towards your chest. Give a tiny stretch on the leg for loosening up. 
that hip joint again and straighten out that leg to the ceiling, pointing the foot all the way. Let's go across the body first, nice and slowly. Bring that leg downward towards your right foot, then bring it up the left side, and then bring it up to your head. Across the body, abs in, downward. Bring it up the left side, nice and long, and back up to the head. And a little bit faster, across and down, and up the left and head. Across and down, and up on the left and head, and across and down, and up, and one more across and down and up. Let's go slowly the other way. To the left shoulder slowly, opening the leg out. Don't let the body go with that leg. Go downward towards your other foot. Across the body to your right shoulder. Back up to the head, feeling the quad burning a little. And then down again to the foot. Back up the right side. And a little faster. Outward to, oh, I'm sorry, we went the wrong way. Oh well, let's go outward down and back up. And we go again outward, down and back up. A little bit faster out, down and back. And one more time out, down and back up the top. Reversing direction across the body, down nice and slowly up the left. Maybe we did another set of four. I've gotten myself all lost now. That's okay. Three more quick circles across the body. Two more, and one more time. And then bring the leg in towards the chest. Stretch out the hip, bring the right leg in towards your chest. Let's grab inside. This time, usually we do a rolling like a log with um, a lot of room between the shoulders and the knees. I'd like you to reach a little bit farther down your shins from the insides of your legs and hug your legs a little closer into you. So it feels like you're flattening your low back into the mat. And let's just rock. This I feel on the upper part of the pelvis, right below my waist. I feel a little massage on my upper hips. Okay, so now let's keep our knees bent. I'm gonna scoot down my mat a little bit. And we're gonna go into double leg stretch, single leg stretch, and crisscross. We'll just do three today of our abdominal series. So let's bring your chest upward towards your knees, pulling your knees and pushing your hands into your knees. So there's a, an isometric sensation here. Arms to ears, legs out to diagonal, circle the arms, grab onto the knees. Arms and legs go outward and circle and grab. And arms and legs up and circle and grab. And again, arms and legs away, circle and grab. Two more sets, we'll go to six. One more. Circle around and bend back in again. Let's rock around on the back a little bit. And now let's go into single leg. Put two hands on the right knee, extend your left leg and look between your legs at your toes. Now put your right hand down your shin a little and see if you can keep that foot from coming into the midline. The right hand down the leg is keeping the leg in parallel alignment. Let's go to the other side, putting the left hand down the shin and continue on. This is the second step. And switch to the left side, switch to the right side, switch to the left side, keep your chin tucked. This is our fourth set. Two more sets and right and left and right and left. Head goes down, reach forward into your Shins again and rock sideways. Massaging your back, releasing the tension in the neck. Now the head will be supported. The leg should be just as precisely placed. Thread your fingers, cradle your head, curl your chest upward towards your legs, extend your left leg. And then go to the other and to the other. And three and four, we count to 12 and five and six. Precise placement of the feet and nine and 10. Two more sets, or two more actual counts, and then come back, grab behind knees, roll up to seated, and come and sit. <sighs> okay, let's go to a spine stretch. Today, uh, let's take it with our arms straight out in front. So when we do the roll up, the arms are parallel to the floor, right? We come up 
they're kind of just like it's if we had a tray across our arms and they're not doing anything but holding the tray as our body is rolling around. When you do spine stretch a certain way, it's the same kind of thing. The arms are going to stay directly out of the shoulders. So as we roll through our spines, the head will actually fit between our arms if we've got enough hamstring length. So straighten out your arms, sit up nice and tall. Your arms are coming out, your shoulders, they're level to the floor. Take a breath for preparation. On your exhale, start to nod your chin, sending your arms directly forward. Abs are working, pulling back as you start to fit your head between your upper arms, keeping your arms going directly forward. Take a breath. On your exhale, stack your spine up from the base of the spine all the way up through to the shoulders, neck, and head. Breath for prep. So the arms don't raise, the arms don't lower. They just get pulled forward. And we go again, exhale. And as you do this, feel how the shoulders are still working or the muscles around the shoulders are still working to keep the shoulders away from the ears. And then we breathe again, exhale, rolling back up. So when we get to the final position of the stretch, we don't want the shoulders to be raised like this. We still want to feel the back holding down and the arms and the head are kind of lots of space here. Breathe in. Exhale, nod your chin. Try to keep the set of the shoulders as you roll forward. You should feel like working your shoulder girdle and in your abdominals, your back is getting longer to stretch forward. Pull the shoulders down as you breathe. Then pull them down again as you exhale, coming back up. One more time, breath for preparation. Now feel the shoulders are supporting a good strong rib cage and the spine is taking its way down to a curved shape, stretching the spaces between the vertebrae. And then breathe and exhale, roll back up. So now we're gonna just do something which is mostly imagery. You can do this, so laying your arms are gonna be in a, on a diagonal, but I want you to think that you're growing taller in your chest. So when I think of growing taller, like I'm peering over something, if I do that action, suddenly I feel my muscles around my front and my back, like two, two of toothpaste, squeezing in, making my spine grow longer. <clears throat> Everyone except for Elaine, who's gonna have her arms a little bit lower, See if you can bring your arms right by the side of your ears. Bonnie, also be conservative on your shoulder today. So match your uh, right shoulder with your left one. Lean forward, feel the back muscles start to engage, and then try to grow taller holding this shape. Pulsing the arms back for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, back muscles, 2, and one, and lower the arms, sit back, and just relax those shoulders. So I feel it big time in my back doing that. Again, that abdominal contraction and the sense of making my spine longer, thinking of working anti-gravity. Hold the arms back up in the air. Lean forward from the pelvis. Rotate your upper body towards the left leg, so you're putting a twist into your rib cage. Let's do that again. Let's inhale as we do that. Come back to the center. Let's go the other way. Inhale to the right leg. Exhale, try to keep the elevation and the expansion of the chest as you exhale with your abdominals. Inhale again. Arms back and grow taller. You're just gonna stay here for two more breaths. Inhale and exhale. Keep the lean forward, keep your arms up. Inhale and exhale, rotate. Roll, lower your arms down and relax your back for a moment. Just a moment, we gotta do the other side. Grow the arms taller again as the spine goes longer. Rotate the upper body, inhaling to the left. Try to keep the length and the expansion of the chest as you exhale. Your belly should do that. Inhale again, grow taller. Exhale, shoulders down, abs in. Try to keep the shoulders down here. It's really easy to let them rise. That would be bad form. One more, inhale and exhale. Now inhale to center. Exhale, let your arms go down on your legs and just relax and breathe into your back. This is a big expansion of your back. And exhale and two more big full breaths. 
and exhale. And one more big breath and exhale. Good work. Okay, so we're going to do a little um, quadruped work now and then some uh, bridges. So let's do, uh, some people call this a bird dog, I guess, in fitness. So if you have to pad your knees, please roll up your mat so you have a nice cushion for your knees. We won't be here for very long, but we will be here for a long enough time to challenge your knee joints. So if you have trouble being on the wrist like this, please feel free to be on the fist. This, is a, this will strengthen your forearm. There's nothing wrong with this position. <clears throat> Excuse me, I will demonstrate this. So the first thing that's gonna, we're gonna think about here is the shoulders in place. I want you to think that your head is trying to pull away from the mat. So it should feel like that little bit of aversion to the mat, like you're feeling your head drawn back to the ceiling. The chin is in line with the nose and everything. You're not letting your chin rise. You're not tucking your chin. You're just in a straight position. I feel my shoulders here and my head back in line. I'm gonna slide my right leg away without wobbling the whole thing until the leg is straight, the toe is still on the mat. Slide that right leg back in. You should see that there's a wobble by your gaze. If you look at the mat and it wobbles, it means you wobbled. Straighten out your left leg, keeping the toe on the floor, and then straighten the knee all the way and bring it back. Remember to feel your quad on that. And now we go to the right leg again. This time, after it's straight, lift it two, two inches or four inches off the mat and hold your position. And then bring it back to quadruped support on the knee. And we go again, anchoring the shoulders, head in line, stretch out the left leg, lift it two to four inches off the mat, squeezing the butt, feeling your quad and your butt. And now we come back. Now we're gonna adjust, do the arm. Looking at the floor, keep weight on your right knee as your left, right arm goes away towards your head, upward. Come back with that arm. Put weight on that hand and your left knee and feel your right, your left arm, sorry, go away. And then come back. Putting weight on the left fist and the right knee, stretch out the right arm again. Notice that it's easier to move the legs in a way than it is to move the arms. And we go to the left arm, putting weight on the right fist or hand and the left knee. So this should lead to some, this is what we're gonna do next. Stretch out the right leg, keep it on the floor, lengthen out the left arm, and then raise the right leg until you feel your glute, the right leg until you feel your glute firing and feel your balance challenged, feeling the bridge between your right hand across your body to your left knee, and then bring it back. Feel like you're concentrating on not moving anything except what I'm guiding. So we're gonna straighten out the left leg, just keep it on the floor. The right arm is going forward. When the right arm reaches, the left leg squeezes the butt and brings the leg as high as you can keep it without arching your back. And then bring that back down. Simultaneous now, right arm, I'm sorry, right leg, Left arm simultaneously moving away. A bridge is underneath from the right hand to the left knee. Bring it down. You also have a bridge or rather an oblique support on your back. Right hand goes out, left leg goes out. Squeeze that butt, bring that arm out. And then we come back. Could you do this without wobbling? One more step. Right leg, left arm, simultaneous movement. One side might feel better than the other at this. Come back and we go to the other side, right hand, left arm, or left leg, and we go, who's more stable, this side or the other way? Come back, stretch out, and child's pose. Just take a stretch to your shoulders, let your hips stay in the air so it's not really child's pose. And let's go back onto our back and we'll do some single leg bridges now. Okay, lying down. Arms by the side, right leg tabletop, left leg tabletop. Oop, wrong. Let's do one thing, flex your feet before we do that. So we're focusing on the hip, it's flexed, it's extending. Right leg goes down, left leg goes down. 
So while you have tabletop position, you can keep your 90 degree leg. Train your body to move from the hip to move the leg to the floor and back up, not from the knee. Left leg, move it away. This is what you're gonna be doing in the air very shortly. Right leg goes, back up, push it from your hip, left leg goes, back up. Lower both feet, arms by the side, take a breath. Press your pelvis up to the ceiling, either in a neutral spine bridge or a curling articulating bridge, either is okay. Let's hold support on the left leg, bring the right leg to that tabletop position you just did, and now hinge from the hip the way you just did, but now your hips are in the air. You have less sensation. You can go farther with your right leg, reaching to a longer line from the hip, and we'll go two more times to reaching out that right leg, and back up and one more time, keep your left hip from dropping and then put the right foot down and roll down through the spine, articulating your back. And then settle your feet in again, take a breath for prep, exhale, curl up again, opening your hip line, squeezing your glutes, keeping your weight on your right foot. Lift the left leg to tabletop position and flex the foot. Remember the movement you did the previous exercise from the hip, lowering the thigh bone. And three more times, lower and exhale, lift it. Inhale, lower the leg and exhale, lift it. And one more time, inhale, lower the leg and exhale, lift, lower the left leg, take breath, roll down through your spine, opening your hip. Ah, good. Okay, so now let's go to, um, we're gonna do some basic back extension a little bit later, but I wanna do some side work and then do that, that little bit of glute work that we did um, last time where we roll a little bit towards our stomach. So let's get on our right sides, please. Mm. Yeah, just on the right side for a double leg lift. So you're kind of in the center of your mat. Keep your left hand on the floor for balance if you need it. Remember, when you're lying on the floor here, you can lie down in a collapsed and resting way where all the bones are just kind of slumping, or you can lie down getting ready for the exercise, which means your abdominals are alert and engaged. You have a little space below your right waist. You could slide a piece of paper through there. Keeping the left hand on the floor for balance, take a breath and exhale, pull the belly in and raise both legs off your mat. Hold your belly in as if it's a, it's a single thing that you do the con consistently throughout the exercise. And then lower back down. So you need to connect the pulling of the belly in or disconnect the pulling of the belly from your exhale. We're gonna exhale to do that, but you're gonna have to inhale continuing to pull it in. Take a breath for a prep, exhale, draw the navel in and lift both legs off the mat, continuing to pull in the belly as you breathe in. And then exhale, lower back down. One more time, breath for preparation. Exhale, abs and lift both legs and hold your position. Now you're gonna float your left arm off to the ceiling. Try to reach for the ceiling and anchor your shoulder and keep your legs both off the mat. Notice that your obliques are working on your left side. You can put your fingers there to feel how taut they are. But we're gonna now challenge. You're gonna raise your left leg slightly off. Last time we moved the arm forward and back from this position to check our balance. Today, we're gonna to do something harder. The arm will stay put. The right hand doesn't hold onto the floor for balance. The palm is up. You're gonna slowly bring your left leg forward and feel how much you would like to bring that left arm to the back. And then we bring the leg to alignment again. Now bring the left leg behind you and notice how you'd like to compensate by bringing the left arm, the left arm forward and then back. Try not to do either of those things. When for me, the harder one is to bring the leg to the front. That's super hard. And then I bring it back. And then when I go to the back, for some reason I'm more balanced, it's not so effortful. One more of the top leg moving. This is not easy. It moves a few inches at best. And then to the left, center, down, arms and legs both. Swing around to the other side. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So a lot of, a lot of what we need is functional strength, which is 
strengthen our core in neutral spine. So this is a neutral spine exercise. I know we do some exercises that are not neutral, they're flexed or extended, but the neutral are the ones that really make a difference in your life. Take a breath, you've got that little space at your left waist, abs are working, and pull both legs off the mat. You can keep your hand on, or keep putting it on your belly to remind you, and then lower both legs down. Two more times like that, breath for preparation. Palm is up on the left hand, and then we exhale, pull in the belly, raising both legs off the floor. Breath for prep again, and lower back down. We breathe for prep, exhale, abs and raise both legs off. Let's do one more time, and then lower back down. This is our last one, we're gonna check for balance, and we exhale, abs and raise both legs off. Unfurl your right arm to the ceiling. Keep the sense of your belly pulling in the whole while, Raise your right leg slightly off. Now we're gonna go forward with the right leg, noticing how much we would like to bring the right arm to the back. And then bring it back over the other leg. Bring the right leg behind, a little bit less compensation and bring it forward. Notice if the leg would like to compensate. So the right leg going forward, the left leg is kind of held. It's mostly the arm that would like to balance me. When my right leg goes to the back, I can feel my left leg would like to go forward. And we'll go one more set, feeling the chosen compensation pattern instead of using your abdominals. And back again, and try to resist that, that natural compensation desire and keep your abs more alert and working. Close the legs, or actually, yeah, close them and bring them both down. Bring your arm down, and let's stay on this side, but back up on your mat and bring your left leg to the front. We're gonna do some glute work and then we'll do today we did a nice such nice single leg circles maybe we should do some hot potato so bring the right leg forward and back and notice if there is going to be a reaction just swing it forward and back and let it feel notice if when you bring the leg forward you tuck your tail or you stop before that or when you go with the leg to the back do you arch your back both of those things would come out of neutral. I would like you not to do that. So now hovering the leg in line with the torso, we're gonna breathe in, go forward with the leg, lift the leg about a foot, and exhale, bring it to the back without changing the spine. Breathe in, go forward, leg lift and lower, and exhale, pull it to the back. Because your left leg is in front, your balance is not difficult. So you can put your right hand anywhere it gives you information about whether you are keeping steady. So the part that's steady is your torso. The part that moves starts at your hip joint. Then we go again, forward lift and lower. Exhale to the back three more times. And we go forward up, down, and exhale to the back. And two more forward lift, lower, and exhale to the back. And one more forward and up and down and exhale to the back. So this is the one that I like lately. We roll a tiny bit towards, let's do a slightly different one. Come up on your elbow. Your leg is still hanging out in space in line with your torso. Turn your face towards the floor and put your, and kind of lower your chest slightly downward towards the mat. You're supporting your upper body with both hands. Bring your right leg behind so that you can feel your butt muscle fire and pop up and then push the leg behind to intensify it for 10 little pulses. And this is two. And this is three, pull the shoulders down. Get your posture nicely held, your head in line with spine. Seven, I think that's seven, and eight, and nine, and 10. And bring yourself back to lying down. Your right hand is somewhere on your hip. Your right leg is now in front. This is where I'd like you to get your left waist off and a nice alignment of your torso. Relax right foot, drop to the floor and up. And two and lift and three, lift and four, lift and five, lift, six, lift, seven. Nice hinge, relaxed foot. Otherwise it goes to the IT on the leg. 10 more and two and three and four, feel how nice it is not to move any other place except what you decide to move, and eight, and nine, and 10. That should feel like a little bit of glute. Now we're gonna aim for hot potato. We like to do a warm up on that. 
So the feet are a little bit behind. Your foot has come from the front of the mat, your left foot, to a little bit behind both legs. So now we're gonna go to stretch out your left leg on the, oh, actually, yes, your left leg on the mat to the front corner of your mat. So your leg is a diagonal from your hip line. Bring your right foot into the knee joint of the left leg. And then we're gonna just hinge and out, loosen up the range of motion in your external rotation in your right hip. Good, so this is a moderate position, the foot on the knee. Couple more. Now hold your leg in the most out position up it can be. And then remember we do this little practice. I'm gonna put my hand right at the ramp of my leg in my hip crease. And then try not to move my knee as I straighten my leg. And then I bend my knee again, and that foot should find the other placement right away. We go again. This is your natural highest point for hot potato. Remember, hot potato bounces to the front and goes to that high point and bounces to the back. So now straighten out your right leg to the top. Put your right hand on the floor for balance. Point your right foot and straighten that knee all the way. Bring it to the front, tapping the floor. One, two, and raise it to that point and bring it to the back. One, two, lift it, and drop two, and up, and tap, tap. This is our third set, we'll go five. Finishing third, try not to wobble your torso. Fourth set, and fifth set coming up. Good, and now raise that leg all the way, grab behind the knee, bend the knee, stretch through the hip, and then let the leg lay down, and go ahead and lie on your back. And let's do a little figure four stretch. Actually, let's do a piriformis first. So keeping your left foot on the floor, cross your right ankle bone over your left thigh, flex your foot so you do not dig into your tendons on your right lower leg, and just feel the pushing out of the knee here to stretch. Keep your left hand on your hips so you don't twist it out of alignment. And now grab to the, raise up your left leg, Grab behind the knee and settle in your neck and head and feel a different stretch in your right hip. Some of you might not feel the piriformis stretch there. There's other ways to do that. I'll look that up because that didn't feel like a lot for me today. This feels like more. I'm gonna roll a little bit to my left, pull the leg in a little closer, feeling the pushing out of the right knee for more stretch on that hip. And let's come on up and go to the other side. Same series of leg exercises. So we're lining up with the back edge of the mat. The right leg is in front as well as the right foot. The left hand is somewhere. You don't need it for balance. Let's keep, actually, let's do the preparation. Put your left hand in your left hip line and then swing your left leg forward and back and notice the reaction in your torso. Do you have one? Are you affected in your torso by the length of your psoas muscle, which would be indicated by the leg going to the back, or your hamstring, which will be indicated by the leg coming forward? So you want to keep that range, uh, what, in, the, in the range that you're working, do that range so you don't uh, challenge your torso too much. Put your left hand on the floor for balance or anywhere you like. Let's swing that left leg forward, breathing in, raise the leg, lower the leg, and pull the leg to the back. Monitor your torso. Feel free to use your arms, or rather your, up, your, your hand, to tell you what's moving, what's not moving. Remember, you have a little scap in your right waist. And we go again, up, down, exhale to the back. Keep going, forward, lift, lower, exhale to the back. Three more, forward, up down and to the back, and two more forward, lift, lower and back, and one more forward, up, down and back, and here we are to the back. Keep yourself now up on your right elbow, gaze towards the floor, two hands are getting you lowering down your chest a little bit farther, keep your shoulder anchored, especially on the right. Push your left leg to the back and feel the glute pop up, and then pulse the leg behind for 10 more pulses and two, and three, and four, opening your front hip, and six, and seven, and eight abs, working nine, and 10. 
bring the leg back to alignment, lie down again, and bring your left hand onto your hip as the left leg comes forward to your drops. And let's go down and up, two, lift. Relaxed foot, four, lift, five, lift, six, lift, seven, and eight, and nine, and 10, 10 more, and one, and two, and three, and four, keep going, and five, and six, and seven, eight, nine, and 10, and bend the knee, relaxing the glute for a moment. Let's go into our clamshell range of motion for our hot potato. So hands on the hip line here. Oh no, sorry, back off a little to your mat and straighten out the right leg to the front corner of your mat and then put your left foot into the knee and you can keep your hand in your hip as you open and close the hip joint, looking for smoothness in that hip joint, range of motion in that hip joint. One hip might be different from the other. Notice which way it is, if it is. Two more times, listening, figuring out where you should be with that hip. Last one, and we hold. Put your hand in that little ramp of your thigh, holding it steady, try to straighten the leg. And then when you bend it, it should find home again. And two more like that. Straighten the leg and bend it. On this last one, we keep it up in the air. Straighten the leg and keep it there. Put your hand on the floor for balance. Bring that leg to the front, tapping twice. One, two, lift to the left. Lift it to the right. Lift it to the left. I mean to the back and to the front. What am I saying right and left? And back, you got it. And two more. And to the back. Let's do one more set. Tap, tap, up we go. Tap, tap, up we go. I can't remember what we did next. I think we're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and lie on the back. Is that it? I think that was it. Did we do those taps? Yes, we did 20. Okay, so let, right leg is on the floor, crossing left ankle over right knee. Push out on your left leg squaring off your hip and then reach forward and grab onto the right thigh flexing your left foot and relax the back of your neck and then just breathe as you feel your body relax into the stretch roll a tiny bit to the right side to the right hip and feel that pulling in of the leg a little bit more for additional stretch and let's come on up and roll up to seated position. Let's do, um, we're gonna actually focus a little bit today on seal. We did a lot of opening of the hip. So uh, remember the claps that we did on the legs. So let's practice them now when our hips are warm. We're gonna do them right at the end of the class. Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Seal is the last rolling exercise in the Pilates form. So let's come down onto our backs and bring your hands, you're gonna do this lying on the back instead of doing it sitting in, on balance. So I have my hands coming through the, between my legs, underneath my calves, wrapping around the outside of my ankles. Try now to keep, because you now have reference point for your pelvis, when you clap your legs from your hips, you should feel a movement in your hip socket and your back should not change, your knee shouldn't change. This clap is a loosening of the hip, and now we're just gonna do a rhythmic one, two, three claps. That's what you're gonna do when you do your, your seal. We'll go over it again, but we might as well take advantage of this moment with our nice loose hips. Okay, so now let's come up and do, we're gonna go on to a plank position, and then to leg pull front, and we're gonna try leg pull back today. So let's go into our nice quadruped, getting ready to go into the plank position. Again, fist or hands could be good with this. Straighten out one leg, I don't care which it is. Curl the toes under, getting ready to bear weight on that leg. Feel the anchoring of the shoulders, the head back, and then change, or rather bring your other leg to straight and hold your position. Today, if you can do, we're gonna do the pulls forward and back, with one foot on the floor only. So straighten that one foot and pull with your arms, 
and push with your hands and pull and push. And one more and push, put your toe back down, switch weight bearing feet and pull with your arms and push and pull and push and pull and push and hold, pike your hips. Straighten out your arms. Lower your heels as much as you can to stretch your Achilles and calves. This also stretches the calf muscle right behind the knee. You might feel a little hamstring, but most likely you're gonna feel calf here. And now let's go back down to the knees. And we're gonna do one more vigorous exercise here. This is like a little bit like knee stretches, uh, but um, it only has one leg moving. So let's bring your toes, you're in the quadruped, curl your toes under as if you're going to bear weight on them and then raise both knees off the mat. You're bearing weight through your toes and your hands. You can also do this on your elbow if you can. Can't do this. Bring your right knee in towards your chest and stretch it away and bring it in and stretch it and bring it in and stretch it and bring it and stretch it. Keep going for four more. We do eight on each leg. Good, and two and one. Curl the toe, balance the legs, transfer weight to the right foot or the other one, and straighten and bend. And two, and three, keeping the knees steady. And five, the one that's holding, six, and seven, and eight. Bring the knees together and feet together, put them down, sit back, straighten out your wrists and elbows, hips up in the air. Let's do our twisting stretch. Bring an arm through, you should face the screen and bring that upstage arm through, trying to get your head on the floor. Stretching through your back, breathing into the twist of your back. One more breath. Look straight at the floor, extend out your arm, balance your position, and then take your downstage arm and thread it through upstage away from the screen, putting the head down on the floor on that side. Breathe into your twisting back. Two more breaths. One more. And then come back up. Okay, let's get, we're not going to transition today. We're just going to crawl around to our backs. Okay, so last one before we do our seal is leg pull back. Everyone has a different geometry of length of arm to torso. I have a very short torso, I have long arms. Some people have long torsos and short arms. How far you bring your arms back behind you to support yourself in a, a back support, otherwise known as leg pull back, is dependent upon your geometry. So you may, you're gonna know what your geometry is like because you've done something like this before and your body kind of knows its own shape and lengths of limbs. Take a breath for preparation, pull your shoulders back and down and broaden your chest and then press your hips up into the air and then come back down. Anchor your shoulders, slump first actually, and then anchor your shoulders, bring your head back in line with your spine and let your head travel with your spine. Don't bring your head back farther or less far. Squeeze your butt and then come back down. Last one, we go again. Abs are working, shoulders to down, abs go. And we lift up, squeezing the butt. Keep those shoulders in place and come back down. Now we're gonna do our seal. So seal has a clap. At the first part, you clap three times when you're sitting in your ready to go position. So we're on balance behind our sit bones. Oh, by the way, um, please remain at the end of class if I haven't talked to you about getting a roller for next week, they're on order. So please remember to stay at the end of class. Um, so grab behind or rather underneath your legs the way we did when we were lying on our backs. So I'm behind my sit bones. Make sure you have enough mat behind you to roll on, please. We don't want any bruised vertebrae. So abs are working, 
Remember the clap is three, two, one, pull your belly in and roll. Roll right back up, find your balance, and clap three, two, one, roll to your shoulders, tuck your chin, roll right back up, and clap three, two, one, and roll. One more, two, three, roll. Hold your balance, bring your knees together, straighten your legs to a teaser shape. Keep holding this V. Do your best to stretch your hamstrings here. One teaser, roll away, and you're done. Thank you.